This tutorial series brought to you by Cavoodle.com. Okay, now we have the footage in our computer. We need to check and make sure that that footage is actually at a high bit rate. So what we need is a program called Stream Parser. And Stream Parser will show us all the info about our file. So do a Google search for Stream Parser and you will see the first link that pops up is the official stream parser topic. So we scroll down and we're gonna find the latest version, which would have been the February 26th version at this point, and stream parser install. This is Windows only, I believe. I haven't tested it on a Mac, but there might be a different version for a Mac. You can also look in VLC and get an overall view of the bitrate, but uh, since we're on Windows, we will do this in Windows. Okay, so you download the zip file uh, and install from there. It will install a program called Stream Parser and it will be under the GH13 project. So the GH13 Stream Parser. When we're in the Stream Parser program, we open up our footage. So let's open up footage that we've just shot. Okay, I'm actually opening this up straight from the card. And if you click the show big information panel, it will show our average total bit rate is 143 megabits per second. So that looks right on since we're using the Orion patch. You can see that these are, and you can also see that it's GOP1, so they're all iframes. So we know that it actually worked. So the, the patch worked, uh, the card worked, you were able to record to it, and to make sure our completed footage actually was high bit rate, it worked from there. You can dump the footage then into uh, an editing program. The simplest way is just to uh, use a program like Vegas, you can actually edit straight from the card if you want. Of course, you probably want to have better media management skills than that, but, and it plays in real time with hardware acceleration. It, this footage can be a little bit more difficult to work with if you have a slower computer, but if you have something uh, fairly recent with like an i5 or an i3 core processor, you shouldn't be, have any editing and doing at least basic effects. There are a couple other issues that we need to talk about in terms of operation with this camera. One of those being the ISO bug with the camera. So the GH2, at least in firmware 1.1, has an issue with ISO 320 and 640. Both of those ISOs will have more noise than they should if you start up the camera and use the camera natively in those modes. So the way to get around that is no matter what ISO the camera starts out, out with, even if you start it up and it starts at 320, you need to go out of that ISO mode, go and select a higher ISO, let's say 2500, go up and above 1250, and then go back down and select 320 or 640. That will eliminate the bug that happens at ISO 320 and 640. Now, if you power down the camera and power it back on, you'll have to do the same exact thing over again. Another question I get is on the white balance of the camera. Uh, since this camera has a Kelvin setting for white balance, that's all I'll basically use. The, the presets, uh, I don't know, some people might like to use those and it's got a white balance to a card. Uh, I, I'm not really into those video camera type features. I'd rather just set it via Kelvin. Um, back before the GH2, I would only do color correction. I would set the Kelvin setting to the native color temperature of the sensor and then filter that down in the front of the lens to that by using, let's say you had a 3200 Kelvin sensor, then you use an 85 filter on the front to filter it down. You can find white with Kelvin alone. Once you get the hang of it, you'll know what, what's going to be uh, close to what settings you're going to need without even looking at that, but you can adjust Kelvin setting and set it in. You can then adjust that setting by going by selecting Kelvin and then you have the fine adjustment menu which allows you to add green, subtract magenta, uh, add yellow or blue. 
Um, I would not do that on this LCD. You want to plug it in to a calibrated uh, monitor via HDMI in order to be able to uh, really fine tune settings like that because the color accuracy on this is really poor. And there's a gamma shift when you hit the record button that changes the output of what goes to the screen. So it, it changes and it will look different. If you'd like to find out more about our sponsor, Cavoodle.com, be sure to check out the links in the description below. When it launches later this year, Cavoodle is going to be a global interactive experience. Using a simple interface, you'll be able to see what's trending anywhere in the world. It's going to be fast, simple, and fun. And again, if you're looking to find out more, there's links in the description. One goes to their site and one goes to a video on YouTube showing what Cavoodle is and how it works.